Hi, welcome to this module on search engine optimization. A lot has been said and written about search engine optimization. How to do it right, how not to do it, what works and what doesn't. It is a lot more difficult than search engine marketing and it does take more time, but if you do it right, you get the prize. A huge amount of free organic traffic to your site. This is what the Google search engine guide says about search engine optimization. It's about putting your site's best foot forward when it comes to visibility in search engines, but your ultimate consumers are your users and not search engines. Keep this in mind and it'll be a breeze. At the end of this video, you will be able to define search engine optimization, understand how search engines work, identify the techniques used for search engine optimization, and the tools that are used for a search engine audit. How do search engines work? It is critical that you understand this first before you start optimizing for the search engine results page. Let's take a closer look at the Google search engine. 60 trillion pages. That is the amount of content available on the net today. So how does Google know what your search query is about through the 60 trillion pages. They've built tools called spiders that crawl the web at regular intervals and collect the information from these pages and store them in an organized manner called an index. So when you actually enter a search query, Google searches the index through tools called algorithms which find their best results and then rank them in order. For example, if my search query matched 1000 pages out of the 60 trillion pages, the Google algorithm ranks these 1000 pages in order so it knows what to display on the first page of search results, the second page and so on. After this whole process is done, your search results appear and all this within the blink of an eye. Who? Oh, search engines surely have a lot to do. Let's take a closer look at algorithms. These are computer programs that match a query to the best possible results on the web, or rather, on the index. They look at more than 200 factors, such as the site content, which includes the keywords that are included as part of the content, the titles and descriptions that the site owner provides while building the site, and a factor called the page rank. Let's talk about this in greater detail in the following slides. If you've heard the terms Panda, Penguin, and Pigeon, these are Google algorithms over the years. In fact, algorithms change as many as 500 to 600 times per year, and you don't always get to know when it is changed. Let's talk about page rank. In simple terms, page rank is a measure of how important your site is based on the number of other pages that link to it. Let's say, I would like to shop at a store and I, I can't decide which store to go to, so I ask a lot of friends. The one store that everybody mentions seems to be the best store available. However, if of the friends that I ask for, one of them knows me best or knows my taste, then the store that she suggests, though it may not be the most often mentioned store, will rank higher in my opinion. Similarly, if your site is discussed about in different blogs and and social media and a lot of other websites refer to it, these become inbound links, that is they, they link to your site, then your site's credibility and trustworthiness goes up. Therefore, the page rank of your site goes up. Again, there are right ways and wrong ways of improving page rank. We'll talk about it later on in this module. Let's take a look at the techniques of search engine optimization. There are two major buckets, on-site optimization and off-site optimization. If you're wondering what the, the hats in this picture refer to, these are the white hat methods and the black hat methods of search engine optimization. This term was coined with reference to western movies where typically the good guys wore white hats and the bad guys wore black hats. As you can guess, white hats refer to the legitimate methods whereas black hat refers to the not so legitimate, the spammy techniques of search engine optimization. Let me assure you, we are only going to talk about the white hat methods. On 
on-site optimization is all that can be done through your site. There are various factors. Let's look at them. Basics, the site layout, site content, and the mobile experience. Site basics include page titles and meta tags. Page titles are the titles for the page that the webmaster or the site creator specifies while creating the site. If you have different pages on your site, each of them will have a unique title. Page titles need to be clear, simple to understand and unique, not just for the user but for the search engine as well. Meta tags are a slightly longer description, more like a summary of what the page is about. Again, these have to be clear, unique and descriptive. Site layout refers to the structure of your site. Site URLs and site structure are the two things that we will be looking at here. Site URLs is the URL address for a page on your site. For example, if I had a site called jasmine.com and I had a contact us page, it should probably read jasmine.com slash contact us instead of saying jasmine.com slash abc xyz123, which does not make sense. Remember, if it doesn't make sense to the user, it's not going to make sense to the search engine as well. Good site structure is essential for the user to understand how to navigate through your site. This also helps the search engine better understand your site. Site maps are a good way of indicating the site structure. Site content is what your site is all about. There are four factors that we look at when we look at site content. The actual content, anchor text, heading tags and images. When you write content for your site, remember to use terms that your users would normally search for. Think like a user. What language would you use when you are entering a search query for your product? Don't use too obscure words or words that don't make sense. But at the same time, don't try and fill the same word all over again so that it appears to have a lot of content. Anchor text is a text that appears for a link. If you had a subpage about toys, instead of saying click here for toys, where here is the linkable text, use the word toys as the link so that the user understands and the search engine understands what the next page is about. Heading tags are what you would specify your headings with. You can use different sizes to indicate headings and subheadings and the judicious use of heading tags will help the user understand what is important, what the subpoints are and of course the search engine also reads that information in the same way. Images. Images are a major factor for site content. They affect the speed with which the site loads. Therefore remember to use small images or crunched images and use them sparingly, use the right images. Also remember to specify the alt text. Alt text or rather short for alternative text is text that appears if the image cannot load for some reason. Sometimes browsers block images or the image may not load because of connectivity issues. In that case, instead of having an error message show up, it all, it's always better to include a term about what the image is about. This helps the user understand what the image could have been and the search engine understand what the image is about because the search engine does not scan the image but instead reads this text. Mobiles are a major source of traffic today. Like we spoke about, close to 30% of the traffic on the internet happens through mobiles. Therefore, it is critical that a user has good experience on mobiles. Mobile usability is a term used to indicate about how friendly your site is on mobiles. Therefore, when you are building it, remember that it should be a simpler version of your website. It should be easy to navigate, not too much of content, legible content, not too much of data input because it's difficult to input data on a smartphone. I want to leave you with this quote by Dave Naylor, who is a digital marketing specialist, where he says, his rule of thumb is, build a site for a user and not a spider. Remember, love your user and Google will love you. Off-site optimization is all the techniques that you can do away from your site. They will not touch your site. The primary method of off-site optimization is link building. These are actions aimed at increasing the number and quality of inbound links to a web page. There are genuine methods and fake methods. 
while fake methods are quicker, like for example, I could create a thousand random sites with links to my website, but search engines are pretty smart. They might detect that you're using spammy techniques and actually pull you down. Genuine methods of link building would be to evangelize your site on blogs and social media. In fact, with the options available for social media today, it's easier to build a bank of genuine inbound links. I love this quote by Matt Cutts, who's the head of Google Web Spam team, where he says, the objective is not to make your links appear natural, the objective is that your links are natural. There are a lot of tools available to measure and analyze search engine optimization performance. These are called SEO audit tools. As any other process, an audit process for search engine optimization is where you take a look at your site, at the various factors that we just spoke about, and measure the performance or the parameters. There are a lot of tools available for SEO audits, but the most important of them are the Google Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics. Let's take a closer look. Google Webmaster Tools is a free resource. It's available for everyone who creates a site. You need to sign up and link to your site. Google Webmaster Tools help you understand and improve your site's performance in the Google search engine results page. They will help you ensure accessibility, submit content, remove content and decide what needs to be seen and not seen. You can also resolve malware and spam issues as well as find what queries your site is appearing on and how you can improve that. And finally, how your site appears on mobiles and what are the factors that you need to improve to improve the mobile usability of your site. Google Analytics is a world famous tool. It's used across the world, not only for SEO, but for SEM as well. It helps you know your audience, where they're coming from, where they're going after your site, what they do on your site, and all of this will help you improve your site content and customize the experience for your users. It also helps you monitor your site in terms of real-time activity. How many users are there currently on your site? Which pages are they looking at? What speed is the page loading at? And so on. Let's take a look at what we've learned in this module. We've learned how search engines work, including algorithms, and the mystery factor called page rank. We've spoken about the techniques of search engine optimization, including on-site optimization and off-site optimization techniques. On-site optimization in greater detail, including titles, meta tags, site structure, content, and mobile usability. Off-site optimization and the most important method of link building. And tools used to audit search engine optimization, including the Google Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics. Thank you.